Hey guys, long time no see, and today I'm going to review the final version of the White Fox Eclipse High Profile Edition. So a quick history lesson, everything started with the Brown Fox. Uh, the Brown Fox was a keyboard that I hand wired like 15 years ago now. At the time we didn't have all the resources that we have now. The keyboard case was extremely expensive if you wanted a uh, machine at aluminum. The switch and keycap selection was extremely limited, especially if you wanted a custom layout like I did. The name Brown Fox comes from the keycaps that I used. It was uh, DSA Retro that basically was the only keycap set that I could use that uh, supported uh, the Brown Fox. It's DSA flat profile, so you can mix and match all the keycaps in every way you want. At the time, it was a custom keyboard uh, delight. So the keyboard was great, but still a DIY project. The case was a sandwich made of aluminum plates and acrylic uh, middle. And I liked it so much that I wanted to bring the project to the next stage. So I asked uh, Drop, at the time it was still Mass Drop, if they were interested. At the time a guy named Kunal was responsible of the keyboard section of Mass Drop and he was very excited about the project so we started developing the White Fox. The White Fox that I still have here, not with the original keycaps of course, these are empty new, the keyboard is my wife's. This was always meant to be as a kit, not as a finished product. In fact, you could select multiple uh, plates and that is the reason why you have visible screws on top, because you could actually pick the layout that you preferred. We had no hot swap at the time, so you had to uh, solder all the switches, but yeah, I was really proud of, of this project and uh, at one point I partnered with Input Club and we made a Kickstarter for another version of the White Fox. It was very successful, but we lost a little of the DIY side of things because the big money are in the finished product and not many were willing to hand solder all the switches. But anyway, fast forward to today. Input Club uh, a few months ago uh, sent me a prototype of uh, this keyboard. They decided to make a new version. That is what you see here. In the meantime, the project switched from uh, Input Club to Alpaca Keyboard. That is a company owned by my good friend Kunal. He basically took over the project. Uh, he told me that he didn't know that uh, I wasn't involved uh, with this project. And he was actually surprised that I wasn't. And so he told me that we should totally do something together. And I'm happy to tell you that we are working on some new keyboards and also some other stuff not in the keyboard realm. But now the Eclipse. So Input Club uh, three or four years ago now held a survey where they asked uh, people what they would want from a new keyboard. And of course they said that they wanted backlight, wireless, uh, small form factor, a cherry profile and a layout compatible with all keycap sets. And this is basically what they've got. Now personally I don't think a project should start from what people want but from your own passion. You can ask for feedback, of course, but uh, you need your own vision. There's a great quote by Stan Lee that basically says, uh, do things that you like, not that you think people like. Don't try to please them, because you don't really know them. Nobody knows them, but you know yourself. Try to please yourself. 
Anyway, the result is very nice if you like a kind of vanilla 65% uh, layout. It's very sturdy, very well built, and in a moment we'll check how it is to type on it. Alright, to make things even more complicated, Alpaca keyboards merged into APOS. Uh, there is a company that sells audio products and they are now branching into keyboards. And I see a pattern here. So I got this slab of aluminum and it's very heavy and very white. Let me show you. This is two kilos and 400 grams. Really, this if, if you drop this, you, you do serious damage. There are no screws and it's all held together with magnets. We have magnets for the top frame and magnets for the plate. Careful because we have a huge battery here. So as you can see we have multiple magnets and the point of this keyboard is that it basically levitates over the magnets and that together with all the insulation should grant a very pleasing, very silent and soft uh, typing experience. So a few issues here. First of all, the Bluetooth switch that as you can see broke here for me because it's really too small and if you are not careful when you put the plate back in place, if uh, the switch doesn't align with the extension, it will break and it broke for me. So this is a very bad design decision in my opinion, but I know that they are fixing it. So, okay, at, at least we have that. Second problem in my opinion is the choice of color. I like how punch in your face is uh, this white but we have two materials here, the keycaps are white, the case is white, and they will weather and yellow differently over the time. I know that they are PBT keycaps, but still they will yellow with your grease and dust and whatever. And since also the frame is white, uh, you will see the difference. Uh, the last problem that I want to mention is that uh, this keyboard is really tall. It becomes a little uncomfortable if you don't have a wrist rest and I think that they should have shaved like uh, two three millimeters at least from the bottom half. So under the hood we have Gatron yellow. They are linear and they have a pretty good uh, stiffness. The keycaps are pretty thick. These are 1.5 millimeters, so they shouldn't need replacement. Let me try to connect the keyboard to the PC. So we have this very nice backlight. You don't probably see it. Let's try. Yeah. And there's like one million different effects if you are into that kind of things. The firmware is QMK so you can customize your layout any way you want. Let's hear how it sounds. So I'm quite an heavy hitter, but this is an incredibly smooth uh, typing experience. The one units are really nice and I have absolutely no complaints about them. Uh, the problem is that they are so silent and so smooth that when you hit the space bar, uh, you can hear the difference. 
Now, I think that this can be fixed uh, very easily. Let me turn on the light. So I think this can be fixed uh, very easily with some foam. I've cut uh, these two pieces of uh, foam just to see how much this can be improved. Let's see. Yeah. I would need to, to cut the, the foam a little better, but now it's absolutely perfect. So this is a modification that I would suggest you to do. And I will also talk with Kunal and hopefully convince him to include a, a foam for the space boy. The same is true for uh, the other bigger keys like the right shift a little about the enter key but uh, it's not a big problem honestly. What bothers me is only the space bar. So as we've seen the keycaps are already pretty thick. I don't think the sound will change much by replacing the keycaps but of course the keyboard will look better with empty new that I have here. And I hope that also the typing experience overall will be better. So my wife always wants to uh, replace the keycaps, so I'll leave that to her. Okay, so it's incredibly elegant and it indeed looks very pretty. Let's hear how it sounds. I'm probably biased, but uh, I think that it sounds better that with the stock uh, keycaps and overall they feel right and this is what I wanted to talk about. I asked Kunal uh, why this keyboard, what is the purpose of this keyboard. It is a very vanilla layout, it has backlight and it's wireless but it doesn't tick all the checkboxes that a modern keyboard uh, should have. And Kunal basically told me something that I completely agree with. That is, what do you care if uh, this is a, a cool keyboard? I want a keyboard that makes me feel good just uh, looking at it. And this is a very solid, uh, gratifying uh, piece of hardware. It's very nice to type on. It's not the best layout and it doesn't have a rotary encoder or whatever. But overall, it's a nice experience. Uh, it's nice to have it on your desktop. It's very smooth to type on and it probably won't be a hardcore enthusiast keyboard. But if you want something that is uh, very well built, solid and, and nice to look at, uh, this is a very good option. So what is the plan? As I said, I'm going to do some collaboration with APOS. Uh, the first thing, I want to make this Eclipse a tiny bit better. So very soon it will be available a Matteo edition. The case will be red. The keycaps will be empty new Susu. So we will fix the white issue and uh, also the keycaps will be of course better. We will fix the switch of course, and I will also ask to include the foam for the spacebar. We have other plans. Uh, one of them is a Topra keyboard, but 
crossing fingers it's not an easy task and yeah if you like this keyboard you can buy it on Apple's uh, website there's also a low profile version that is uh, cheaper and I believe also one with a plastic case that is even cheaper that's all for today see you next time ciao